liquid carbon, one of the most commonly misunderstood products in the planted aquarium hobby. Some folks call it CO2 in a bottle, an algae killer, a miracle for plant growth. What actually is it? Does it work? Is it safe for your aquarium? And if it does work, how does it work? In this video, I'm gonna answer all of those questions and I'm gonna break down complex biochemistry into something that a five-year-old can understand. So if you find a video like this helpful, show me a little love, like the video, subscribe to the channel, maybe even share it with a friend. Let's dive in. So here's the first big truth. Liquid carbon is absolutely not liquid CO2. There's no liquid or gaseous carbon dioxide in the bottle. Instead, it contains a liquid chemical that plants can sometimes use as an alternate carbon source when dissolved CO2 is low. In this video, I'll primarily be using Flourish Excel as the example since it's the most widely used product. But just know that most liquid carbon products on the market use the same active ingredient or something very close to it. So what's really inside the bottle? The active ingredient listed on the label of Excel is something called polycycloglutaracetyl. That's not a standard or even established scientific term. It's a trade name created by Seachem themselves. Chemically, it behaves almost exactly like glutaraldehyde, a disinfectant used in hospitals to sterilize instruments. If you want an in-depth, nerdy explanation of how the active ingredient works, I'm gonna link a video that I put together a few years ago that breaks down all the chemistry. That'll be linked below in the video description. So glutaraldehyde as the active ingredient is not necessarily bad. At these low concentrations, it's totally safe for aquariums if you follow the instructions. It's just important to understand what it actually is and how it works. When people say liquid CO2, that's just completely wrong. What you're really dosing is a mild glutaraldehyde solution, very diluted solution that plants can use a little bit to grow and that algae hates a lot. So how does it work for plants? Plants, just like humans, are carbon-based life forms. They're mostly composed of carbon. So how do plants get carbon to create more plant? They use CO2 dissolved in the water or from the atmosphere when their leaves are above water to build long carbon chains, which create sugars and plant mass. When you add liquid carbon, you're giving them a partially built carbon molecule that they can sometimes plug into that building process. The reality is the science isn't very well tested, but it does make sense when you analyze it. So what's the role of liquid carbon in an aquarium? Well, it doesn't replace injected CO2, but it can help fill small gaps for tanks that don't use pressurized gas. If a full pressurized CO2 system is a 10 out of 10 for plant growth and color and lushness, liquid carbon is around a five or a six. It's useful when you can't make the optimal choice, but it's not a CO2 system in a bottle. If you're chasing those thick carpets, lush stems, and explosive growth that you see in high-tech tanks, you're gonna need the real thing. So why does liquid carbon reduce algae? Well, that's because the active ingredient, glutaraldehyde, naturally breaks down simpler cell walls, which algae and biofilm contain. Think of plants as having these thick, well-guarded stone castle walls as their defense. Algae and biofilm has thinner wood walls that are easily breached, and that's why glutaraldehyde is so effective, but it doesn't really injure your plants or your fish or your shrimp when used at these diluted levels. That's why people often see cleaner leaves or reduced algae when they dose Excel daily. While chemically certainly an algicide, it's not officially sold as an algicide. So why isn't it marketed as an algicide? Wouldn't that just clear things up for consumers? Here's the legal truth. If a product claims to destroy, repel, or mitigate algae, it's considered a pesticide or an algicide under US law. That means the manufacturer, in this case Seachem, would need to register it as a pesticide, prove safety and efficacy, and include very strict label claims. Because this bottle mainly markets itself as a carbon supplement, it avoids that regulatory burden, even though one of its chemical effects is antialgal. So in short, it's easier to market it as for plants rather than for killing algae. And this is essentially what causes so much confusion among hobbyists. So should you use it? Well, if you don't run CO2 and you want a modest boost to your plants, sure, go ahead and give it a try and follow the instructions. Dose exactly as directed and avoid heavy spot dosing on mosses or ferns. It is safe and it can absolutely make a difference, but remember, it's just a supplement, not a proper solution to providing carbon to your plants. If you're serious about achieving really thick, explosive plant growth, you're gonna need the real thing. And the best way to do that is by injecting pressurized CO2. So does quote unquote liquid carbon work? 
Yes, technically it does. Just not the way that most hobbyists think it does. It can be a great way to help a low-tech tank do a little bit better, and it's an excellent way to reduce algae, especially when spot dosing. If you're gonna use this stuff, make sure you follow the instructions explicitly because overdosing can kill. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and learned something, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to catch you in another one of my videos. Bye-bye.